So I did a, um, I did a talk in uh, October, November at the AI and Data Conference in Toronto, and I met this really interesting group called Intent. AQ, uh, Intent uh, HQ, and I met Kip, and I think he's got a super interesting um, opportunity to sort of share this, the, it's not really a startup, you guys are, you know, you're killing it in, in the UK, you're a massive business, but you're a startup in Canada. Yeah. Yes. So tell us a little bit about what you guys do. Thanks, Alex. Thanks so much for inviting me to be here and uh, to take part in this really vibrant, growing community of Tech TO. When I was kind of preparing for this uh, opportunity, some research on TechTO, and I love one of the taglines on, on the website, which says, uh, a community that wins together. And it's been really kind of energizing to see firsthand tonight how, how you live into that by, by learning from each other, supporting each other on their journeys, and, and, and building connections. So that's, that's what I want to center my, um, my, my presentation on tonight. But first, a uh, brief introduction to IntentHQ. Who's IntentHQ? So, we are a AI customer analytics platform that helps businesses tap into previously, um, previously untapped data sets to understand customer behavior and to do that while preserving their privacy and, and, and all of the data privacy and permissions associated with that. Um, and our clients love us because we help them solve three really big problems in the world of AI. The first is extracting predictive signal from these really large, noisy data sets. Um, this is behavioral, network behavioral activity data, like web, law, web, web browsing behavior and device behavior, which I'll, I'll come back and explain in more detail. Uh, the next thing we do is we allow, we, we, they run one or multiple of our small behavioral models that allow them, that allow them to generate really accurate predictions, uh, profiles and, and prescriptive insight about customer behavior. And then finally, we'll use one of, our, one of our visualization tools or activation APIs to be able to make, to allow data scientists and marketers to easily kind of integrate those insights and those predictions into their workflows and turn them into customer value. Behind the platform, we're about 120 intenters uh, living in five countries and supporting customers across the globe. And um, yeah, and we've, we've been recognized by FT uh, as one of, um, FT1000 as one of Europe's fastest growing companies for the last three years. We have about 37 patents, two of which uh, are in China, so we look forward to trying to defend those someday. <laughs> Next slide. Um, so I said I wanted to talk about winning, and I'm really proud to, to let you all know that about three weeks ago, um, IntentHQ was named AI Company of the Year. And of course, it was a huge and, and humbling achievement for us. And after the ceremony, we approached the judges and we asked them, help us understand, like, what was it that kind of set IntentHQ apart from the 319 other companies that were, were being evaluated for this award? And their responses really kind of focused in on three main things. Um, the first being our innovative approach and impact for using a, um, applying AI to first party data at scale. The second was the depth and breadth of privacy enhancing technologies and pets that they're affectionately called. Um, and, I'll, uh, and I'll come back to explain a little bit more about that. And finally, it's our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. So I wanna take the remaining few minutes here just to unpack each of those, because not only do I think it'll help you better understand who Intent HQ is and why we do what we do, but I think there's some lessons there that anyone who's in the AI space can, can hopefully take away and think about applying in your journey on either developing, uh, deploying, or using AI technology. So um, two stories about first-party behavioral data. So, and when I talk about this, like in the case of Verizon, the big innovation that we did, that we achieved with Verizon, was allowing them to to act, to use their their own consumers, their 100 million consumers, um, web browsing data. So how they surf the internet on their mobile phones, to be able to use that data for marketing. Um, let's rewind the clock to 2019. That data set was completely off limits, not only to the marketing team but also to their their data science team. So along that journey, what we've done is today, 
um, Verizon's AI and, and data teams are, are using uh, weblog-derived predictions and data features to improve their, their predictive models like churn. Um, they're also using it to, to enhance their capabilities around decisioning and next best action, next best offer, as well as using it to, to help power some of the LLMs, their own internal LLMs that they're building for, for JNA AI initiatives. And the marketing team, as hopefully you can see here, there's some stats, although for, for those of you in the back, I'm sure it's impossible to see some of this, but the marketing team is achieving millions of dollars uh, in incremental revenue through improved campaign performance. And, and this is where hopefully, for you creative guys, I, hopefully I can debunk the myth that AI can do insight. Um, and so, and, and, and Verizon's been a great case for us in proving that out. The next thing I want to talk about is a um, female-founded fintech MVNO, mobile virtual network operator in Mexico called MexMobile. Um, they are using our AI agent, which is deployed on device. It's a one-line piece of code that you can deploy on a mobile app. And it essentially does the same thing. It can extract signal from over 16,000 different data points that are on your, your mobile phone to be able to create on-device uh, predictions and insights that will allow you to allow companies to, to better understand customer behavior. And in the case of MexMobile, um, really try to make a, a huge impact in, in the lives of nearly 30 million women in Mexico that today essentially are digitally blind, meaning they have no credit history, uh, no credit scores, and no digital footprint. And when they go to access microloans, um, pay interest rates on the order of 130 to 400%. So what, what Nadia and the MexMobile team are hoping to do is with the combination of big data and our edge AI technology is to develop kind of an alternative credit scores and models and, and access capabilities that, that would allow these women to get more affordable access to money. Um, and so one of the core things that we've done to engineer um, our, our, our AI platform is to, to, to develop what's called privacy enabling technologies or PETs. Um, and these are more, more than the kind of specific technology uh, you know, protocols, for example. They're more like frameworks. But what, what, what we were recognized for is really the, the depth and breadth in which we've, we've not only developed but deployed these. And like every pet owner, um, we're proud of our pets. And the one in particular that I wanted to highlight was this secure multi-party computation. So what does that mean? We actually use that technology in our edge campaign console. So, and what that does is it allows brands to centrally define complex campaign logic and then push that out to each user's phone, individual phone, and it can run there. And that enables them to essentially offer the right campaign to the right customer while be it being remaining completely anonymous. So, and finally, I want to talk about our commitment to diversity. Um, we, you know, we try to foster ethical AI environment by minimizing bias and really encouraging uh, inclusivity in, our, in the ways we work and our culture. And that hasn't gone unnoticed. Um, for the last two years, we've been recognized as um, as, as employee of the year by women in tech. And not only are we hiring a lot of women, we're promoting a lot of women. 83% of promotions in the past 18 months were women in some pretty uh, impactful roles like principal machine engineer and associate data scientist. So I, I want to leave you with basically those, those three things. I mean, it's very important if you're going to be in AI, you need to focus on solving a data problem you need to be, pay very close attention to and be, be prepared to manage privacy. And you need diversity because, let's face it, the, what go, the models and the AI is only going to be as good and as ethical and as responsible as the data that goes into it, the people who work on it. Thank you very much. Yep, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Kip. Uh, do we have any questions for Kip? Hi, um, my question is like you've built all of this and you know that we're kind of all at the whim of LLMs and where they currently are today. Knowing that we've got ChatGPT5 out, we've got other, you know, we got Google and all that. How are you strategizing to accommodate the changes 
that we don't have control over. Because I agree with you, I'm using it for strategy. I love all the creative stuff, but I'm finding amazing things. Like I'm creating personas out of AI. Customer data, turning them into personas. But I'm always thinking how to build a strategy knowing that it'll be stable and solidified for the next three years, knowing that there's going to be so much change. Great question. So sorry, yeah, this, so I think in terms, I guess one of the ways we think about it, it really comes down to one of the principles and ethos that we found the company on, which is, you know, you understanding, it's really people do, um, people are what they do, not what they say. So you really want to get at the essence of behavior and activity. What are we actually doing? But it's important to also recognize that essentially when you try to market to someone or advertise to someone, it's, it's actually more about the pattern of behavior than it is about the person itself. And I mean, I know there's, I'm sure there's some exceptions to that. And so one of the ways that we're thinking about that problem is we're actually, then that's why we focus first party data. So this is this, this brand or this business is their own, um, their own customer data that their customers have already consented and given them permission to use. We're, a lot, we're using just that data source. So we're not bringing in cookies. We're not bringing in any second or third party data that's available out there. It's building these models to extract the signal just on the data that their customers are, have already given them. And, it's, and that's the ground truth. We, we believe that fundamentally, if you want to understand your, your customer, if you want to be relevant, you need to meet where they are, understand their context and the, and the things that, that make them human, their likes, their interests, and things of that nature. So Kip, you're, you're launching in Canada. What, when is the, uh, what's the ETA? Boy, um, sounds like, you sound like my boss now. When are we closing <laughs> that deal? Um, yeah, hopefully, I mean, we, we've got a few really active conversations going on with some pretty big brands here in Canada. So we're, we're, we're super excited. You're super excited. So you think by fall you'll be here? Certainly be here doing something. Yeah. yeah and definitely. are you guys hiring? Are we what? Are you hiring? Um, not, so we are, uh, we've got about, we've got a team, we've got several teams. We have a sales and a customer success team. And we actually have our, uh, several members of our tech ops and data strategy teams uh, based in the U.S. Mm -hmm. We're not really hiring right now because we're kind of going through a, uh, we're preparing for a funding round. Mm -hmm. But after that, we will be so hiring you're preparing like preparing for a funding round. That's amazing. Well, you know what? I am always in the belief that you should hit up people before they're looking. So if you guys yeah. are looking, this is a cool new company. They are launching in Canada. Kip, thank you so much for this great presentation. Thanks, Alex. Yeah.